Hey, plant lovers! Welcome back to Succulents Box's plant care session. Today, we're diving into something a little different, but super fascinating, succulent mutation. This is what creates lumpy, twisted stems, crazy fan-shaped growth, or creamy pink and green leaves that seem too pretty to be real. A mutation is simply a change in a plant's DNA, the genetic instructions that tell it how to grow, what color it should be, and what shape its leaves or stems should take. Most of the time, when a plant grows new cells, it copies its DNA correctly Correctly. But every now and then, something shifts, a small error happens, and that mistake becomes a mutation. Over time, some mutations can even lead to entirely new species, helping plants adapt to different environments. No two mutated plants are exactly alike, and when you spot a rare one, it feels like finding treasure. Let's go over a few of the most common types. First, we have variegation. This is when the plant develops patches or streaks of color, like white, yellow, or pink, due to a lack of chlorophyll in some parts of the leaf. It's why plants like variegated string of pearls or variegated jade have such stunning patterns. Then there's crested or cristate growth. This happens when the plant's growth point gets elongated instead of staying rounded. The result is a fan-like shape, like a flattened wave of rosettes that looks sculptural and dramatic. A great example is Aeonium sunburst cristata, Another type is monstrous growth. Instead of growing in a neat, symmetrical shape, the plant develops twisted, irregular, or lumpy stems. Euphorbia lactea, monstrous, is a popular one with weird, bumpy forms that make every specimen look totally one of a kind. You may also run into albino, or albinistic mutations, where the plant has little to no chlorophyll at all. These plants can look pale yellow or white, and are often super fragile. Since they can't photosynthesize properly, they usually need to be grafted onto another plant to survive. And finally, we've got weird leaf shapes. Some mutations lead to leaves that are tubular, ruffled, or finger-like. Take Crisula gollum, for example. Its leaves look like tiny green fingers and give the plant a super distinct personality. Mutations can come from a few different places. Sometimes it's just nature doing its thing, random changes in the DNA during cell division. Other times, mutations are triggered by stress. If a plant gets injured, faces extreme weather, or experiences environmental pressure, it may grow in unusual ways as a response. In rare cases, viruses can lead to changes in a plant's appearance. They might affect chlorophyll production, causing variegation, but this kind of variegation is usually unstable. And then there's us, humans. Plant breeders sometimes intentionally induce mutations through chemicals, radiation, or selective breeding to develop new cultivars. Mutations are random, so there's no guaranteed method, but there are ways you can encourage the process. One is by applying mild stress, like slightly changing light, water, or temperature. This won't always lead to mutations, and pushing a plant too far can harm it, so be careful. Another option is to watch for natural sports. These are spontaneous mutations that pop up on a single stem or leaf. If you spot one, you can try propagating it and see if the new plant carries the trait. Professional methods like chemical exposure or radiation aren't really safe or practical at home. Your best bet is to observe and propagate any odd or interesting growths you see naturally. Can you keep a mutation going through propagation? It depends. If the mutation is stable and genetic, like many variegations or some monstrous forms, it will usually pass on through cuttings or offsets. But if it's a chimeral mutation, meaning only part of the plant has the mutation, it may not carry over. The new plant could revert to its original form, Variegated or crested plants often have less chlorophyll, which makes them more sensitive. They do best in bright, indirect light. Too much sun can scorch them, and too little can cause them to lose their special features. Watering should be done carefully. These plants often grow slower, so they don't need as much water. Let the soil dry out completely between waterings, and always use a pot with drainage holes. Soil should be light and well-draining. A mix of cactus soil with extra perlite, or pumice, is ideal to prevent root rot. When it comes to propagation, the best results come from cuttings or offsets taken from parts of the plant that clearly show the mutated trait. Let the cutting callus before planting and keep it in bright, filtered light. Succulent mutations are nature's way of showing off, and we're here for it. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more plant care tips. And as always, happy planting. For more, you can find us at succulentsbox.com or on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest.